Hello, welcome back. I'm Kate Sylvia. Today we're going to talk about how to blend two images into one. You can do this for multiple reasons. You can do it to blend elements from one image to another. You can also do it to blend two different exposures to create one properly exposed image. And that's what we're going to do today. This is otherwise known as HDR, High Dynamic Range. Uh, it can be done with uh, third-party software like Photomatix and HDRFX Pro which are both wonderful programs. I highly recommend them. Um, or you can do it manually in Photoshop with, one, with two or more exposures. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take these two images that were taken up at Roan Mountain in Tennessee and we're going to blend them together. One of them you can see is properly exposed for the sky. The other one is properly exposed for the foreground. So what you want to do is open up both images in Camera Raw or Lightroom, whatever photo editing, raw editing uh, software that you use. And you're going to want to select all because whatever changes you make to one, you're going to want to chain, make the changes to all of them. And so some of the basic recommendations I have for things that you should do to both is uh, to come in here and do lens profile corrections. Uh, I was shooting with a Tokina 12-24 lens here. You can come over here to the color and remove chromatic aberrations. That's a good one uh, to do to all your images. If you do any basic color adjustments to white balance um, or vibrance or clarity or anything like that, do it in uh, Camera Raw and do it to both of them. And I would, I would probably steer clear of too many adjustments in Camera Raw because you are going to be combining two different images and they both have uh, different attributes that you're going to want to deal with in Photoshop. So you're going to open up your images together. There we go, there's two of them. And if you have a version of Photoshop uh, higher than CS3, so CS4 and above, you're going to want to come into your Photoshop preferences and come to the interface and make sure that open documents as tabs is checked. That will just help when you are combining images uh, and making it a little bit easier for you. If you have an earlier version of Photoshop, you can come up to select all or command, hit Command or Control A, and that will select your image. So this is a lot easier than uh, most people think uh, when they're starting to get into HDR. Uh, this is I refer to this as the easy method. The external software is sometimes even more difficult. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that that image is selected, that that tab is highlighted, and you're going to want to come over to your Move tool, which is up here in your toolbox, and you're going to either hit the move tool icon or you can just type the shortcut V. So I'm going to type the letter V and I've got my move tool. And you can click on the image, hold down the mouse, drag it until the other image is highlighted and bring it back in and release. And you can see when I did that that it did not line these up properly. Uh, one way to avoid that, to try and do that a little bit better, is when you are on your first image and you are moving, hold down the shift key and that will assist when you bring it over in lining them up together. Uh, but just in case if it was windy, if there was any camera movement, if uh, I was shooting handheld, which you shouldn't if you're doing HDR, um, you can come over here, oh, actually let's zoom in, type the Z key and zoom in. You want to get in nice and close so you can see a, a good transition. Come over here to the opacity slider and drag it back a little bit, 80%, 50%, it doesn't really matter, just so long as the background layer shows through. Type that move tool again and click and drag it and you can see the, the top layer and the bottom layer, how they are arranged. So just make sure that they're lining up. Zoom back out. Now that you have your two images together, you've got your background and your foreground. You can toggle it on and off with the little eyelet here. And you can see the two of them drag that opacity back up to 100%. What you're going to want to do is come down here to the bottom of your layers palette and add a layer mask. Make sure that that mask is selected, not the foreground image, but the mask itself. And you're also going to want to come over here and make sure that your default foreground and background colors are set. You can either type the letter D to make sure that they are black and white or come over here and click on this little icon. And if they are reversed, if the black isn't on top, then you can hit this toggle switch right here, or you can just type the X key for a shortcut. So what I'm going to want to do is select a brush. Make sure that uh, you have a nice 
large soft brush and you can increase the size of your brush with the left and right bracket keys and I am going to come up to my opacity there's a couple ways you can do this uh, one way is to have your opacity at a hundred percent make sure you're painting with the color black over over your white mask and you can see the results right here painting in black in this little area and you can just paint to allow the other layer to show through. Now you can see when I do this that the transition here between the foreground image and the background image is pretty harsh. So one way to resolve that is to come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and put your little square on the transition zone. You can see that if the pixels are around three pixels that it's harsh and the more pixels that I add to it the better the transition gets. And you just start increasing the pixels until you get a result that you like. And there you can see the transition is much much better. That is one way to do it. Another way to do it is to come over here to your opacity of your brush and drag it down to you know anywhere between 10, 20, 30 percent depending on just your personal preferences and come over here and start painting at lower amounts. So right now I'm at 17 percent so I'm not allowing too much of the background layer to show through. And You can see when I do that that the transition now between my foreground and my background where the mountains meet the sky is a little bit softer but the foreground is not yet bright enough at least for me. So I'm going to paint again. When you lower the opacity of your brush, whenever you hit the brush again, the effect is cumulative. Brush again, and maybe I want to lighten this up a little bit more. And again, the painting, you'll just, you'll get used to it with time. Maybe lower the opacity to even 6% and hit that again, just because that transition is looking a little a little rough there. And there we go. Uh, now we have, if I can toggle this on and off, that's the before where I've got the severely overexposed sky and the after where I have a better exposed image. And from this point um, I usually will flatten my layer, create a new image, I might save it separately, and then I would proceed to do my normal edits. Um, when I line these up I can tell when I came in here that this was misaligned here. Um, I must have either moved my tripod, maybe it was windy, I don't know, but that's why I check at 100% just to make sure that they are lined up. So I might come in here and crop that out. Might come in here and clone this out. Uh, go ahead and do just your routine edits. And uh, just like that, with the simple use of a move tool, dragging one image on top of the other and adding a layer mask and just start brushing at different opacities, you have entered the world of HDR. It is no longer a mystery to you, I hope. Uh, watch this video tutorial several times. It takes some practice and pretty soon you will start getting used to it and it'll uh, become like second nature. Welcome to the world of HDR. You guys have a good day.